man. How freaking beautiful is this? It's just like a random lake on the roadside. I'm telling you, if you guys get a chance, you come out to the South Island, make it happen. It's like heaven on earth. It's just unbelievable. It was not the first time I visited New Zealand. My family immigrated there from Iraq in 2000, and I've always been eternally grateful for the comfort, security, and support that they received in the ensuing years. Since I was planning to be in Melbourne for the Ironman competition, and make sure to check out that vlog, I decided to spend some time after in the region and was deciding whether to explore new islands in the South Pacific or go to New Zealand after the race to celebrate my birthday with loved ones. I was leaning on the former, but when I happened to meet the former Prime Minister of New Zealand a few weeks before, I saw it as a sign and decided to head to New Zealand. After my birthday festivities, I decided to explore the South Island since I fell in love with the backdrop from the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and it did not disappoint. What makes the South Island unique is its raw nature in terms of its snowy peaks, surreal fjords, and pristine lakes. In fact, the island has eight of the country's largest lakes, diverse wildlife, and despite being over half the landmass of the entire country, it only has a quarter of the population. In Queenstown Airport, what a beautiful way to get greeted to the beauty of the South Island. Since it only had 72 hours, I packed one hell of an itinerary to see as much as I could with a major focus on nature so we can get in some hiking, sailing, and even swimming in that short period of time. The goal was to fly into Queenstown in the middle of the island, rent a car, and go explore the lakes, fjords, before making our way up north to Christchurch so we could fly out to Auckland. But before we had a chance to embark on this nature marathon, we went out to explore Queenstown, and I had no idea it was this beautiful. Checking out the downtown of Queenstown, and I think it's kind of like a rest stop before people go out and explore the southern part of the southern island. Even though it's a Sunday and it should be a little quieter, it's definitely not. And there's a couple of places here that are marquee that you definitely want to check out. And we're going to check out one of the burger spots. Maybe not today, but maybe tomorrow. With a population of only 30,000, it is truly a summer and winter wonderland with world-class skiing and water sports, making this city likely New Zealand's most famous for its natural beauty. It's also famous for its unique restaurants and other highlights in the city. We were able to catch the sunrise at the top of the cable car and take in all our surroundings with the majestic mountains in the background and the intersecting lakes right below. And the town itself is very unique and walkable, so you would be remiss if you visited New Zealand without checking out this incredible city. On the second day, our goal was to drive to the fabled Melford Sound, about four hours from Queenstown, and stopping along the route to check out the lakes, rivers, and meadows that makes the South Island so unique. Before we get to Mulford Sounds, we want to make a quick pit stop to kind of check out a couple of the other sites. Every Kiwi we spoke with was said, don't rush. Take your time because there's some beauties along the way. And I think this one is going to be a gold mine. Already the, the hike into here looks epic. The water is so clear, I feel like jumping in and drinking it all. But I'm not going to do that. Gorgeous, gorgeous hike so far. Amazing. Along the route, we stopped by the trail to get to Marin Lake, which is nestled high up in the mountains. As we ascended, we were blown away by the natural surroundings and even dipped our feet in the frigid glacier water, which was probably the coldest we experienced on the trip. However, despite our best efforts to make it to the top, we just ran out of time and had to descend if we wanted to make it back in time for our ferry in the sound. So unfortunately, we gotta pull out, but, this is what it looks like, so I definitely recommend you do it and give yourself plenty of time when you're driving up from Queenstown. And the hike is definitely strenuous, but absolutely magical. It literally feels kind of like I'm a hobbit walking in the woods. Unreal. Alright, so driving to Melford Sound is such a cool road. It's one way in, one way out, and it's smooth as silk. 
Take your time. There's so much to see along the way. Absolutely beautiful. You can see you're like literally driving through canyons and through high, high altitude mountains. You can even see, like check that out right there. You can even see waterfalls just kind of coming down from the glaciers. Just so beautiful. And honestly, even though we're driving on this side of the road for us Americans, it is not that hard because again, it's one way, one way, and super easy. So I definitely recommend rent a car from Queenstown, drive yourself to Melford Sounds and you'll love it. It's really worth it. As we drove to the Sound, we saw some incredible views en route and thought we were making good time until we hit some major roadworks that completely set us back. When we got to the ferry parking, I ran as fast as I could to the terminal, only to miss the ferry by a few minutes. Freaking missed it. Ah. Thankfully, we got a reprieve and another company put us on their last boat of the day and man, was it worth it. Right, these guys are so cool. They pretty much gave us a voucher. Note to self, always read the instructions because they gave us instructions and we clearly, I clearly did not read them. So we're gonna go on a smaller boat. I can't think of a better day to do this because it is so beautiful out here. The sun is gorgeous. So I'm looking forward to this. Yes, it worked. We were super fortunate since the weather was great and the area was simply magical. As if the nature wasn't enough, the wildlife we saw definitely made the place feel like something mythical, out of Pandora. Dolphins, penguins, seals, with majestic waterfalls in the background, making this place one of the most unique I've ever been to. Now that's a waterfall. in Milford Sound and what is amazing is as you get out of Milford Sound you see what this probably looks like a wall of waterfalls and during I would imagine the early spring late winter when there's really mountain runoff it would just be literally water covering all these inner mountains it's like a, a freaking bowl of these jagged high rocks it's so hard to drive because it's so distractingly beautiful We made our final stop of the day at Mirror Lake before heading back to Queenstown. But by the time we got to Queenstown, we were super hungry after that epic day. It turns out one of the most iconic restaurants for a burger is open past midnight. So we got there with plenty of time to taste what they claim is the best burger in the world. And I'm not gonna lie, it was superb. The next day, we planned to head to Mount Cook, the highest point in New Zealand, and the nearby lake of Pukaki. As you can imagine, there was tons to see along the route, including the town of Wanaka and the clay cliffs of Omorama. Now, I promised myself that I would swim in at least one spot on this trip, and the lake at Wanaka was just way too tempting not to jump in. First stop of the day in Wanaka. Beautiful. Man, I'm running out of superlatives for this place. But what's famous about this place is this lowly tree right in the middle of the lake. Obviously it's fresh water, so it's probably growing well, and it's blossoming right now because it's in the middle of their kind of advanced spring. But what a backdrop, absolutely gorgeous. All right, and these are the clay cliffs in Omorama with like a beautiful riverbed out in the distance. And these clay cliffs right here, kind of changing up the complete topography. Because what you went through was just a bunch of mountains and incredible like green grassy hills uh, and so forth. And then suddenly, bam, you get this complete change of topography. Just want to come check it out. It's along the route as we go towards Mount Cook. So why not stop and check it out?
So this is Mount Cook National Park, and you got a beautiful trail that takes you right up to Hooker Lake, which is just at the base of Mount Cook, which I think is probably one of the tallest points in New Zealand, if not the tallest. Absolutely stunning drive to come in here. Unbelievable. Super excited to do this. It should be about a two and a half hour hike there and back. background of Mount Cook and Mount Cook National Park. Absolutely. What an incredible day. And just when I didn't think the South Island could get any more beautiful. We finally ended that day in the little town of Twizel and even got to do some stargazing in one of the island's best locales to see the stars. Now, one of the main reasons I wanted to go to the South Island was to see some of the movie locations of my absolute favorite trilogy, Lord of the Rings. Right here is the field for the Pelennor battlefield that took place. And they had almost 10,000 extras from all over the world that came out to recreate this battle scene, which is probably the most iconic scene in or the Lord of the, the Rings movies. And the reason they chose this site, which is outside of the, the, the city of Twizel, is because of the mountains and the way and the description of the battlefield itself, which is exactly what Peter Jackson wanted, because that's what he read in the book of The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. And it's incredible, because you see it right here, and it's like a private land in the middle of nowhere, but it is such an incredible backdrop. And I can see how jazzed and how pumped they were when they were doing this scene almost 20 plus years ago. Unbelievable. What's crazy is if you were walking like this in America, it's probably like 50 snakes that would bite you. And what's nuts about New Zealand is there are no venomous snakes here. And there are almost no major animals here, except the kiwi bird that doesn't fly, sheep, basically domesticated livestock. It's like not only easy hiking, but such safe hiking. Because I think if you went to their neighbor across the water to Australia, man, you can only imagine what would come and bite you. And you know that back in the day at its peak, there are almost 20 sheep for every human in New Zealand. Now it's down to about five, but still that's a lot. That's probably over 15 million sheep in this country. And you see them everywhere as you drive through the country. On our final day, we started the drive to Christchurch and stopped by Lake Tikapu to see its tranquil beauty. After spending some time there, we made our way to the final stop of the trip to the little French influenced seaside town of Akaroa decided to make a pit stop in a city called Akaroa, which is about an hour, hour and a half from Christchurch. Old colonial French town, really, really nice and quaint, pretty far out there on what they call the Banks Peninsula. But nice, quiet, chill. I waited many years to visit the South Island, and even though we only had 72 hours on this magical island, I felt incredibly grateful for what he had seen in that time. Ice-capped mountains with pristine glacier lakes, meadows with wildlife frolicking at their leisure, oh, yeah. nature hikes and picturesque sounds, delicious food, and of course, the people who made you feel so welcome and at ease experiencing their little slice of earthly paradise. Well, I hope you enjoyed this mini tour of the incredibly beautiful and heavenly southern island of New Zealand. You know they say, if you believe in heaven, I really truly feel that this is a small window into what you can expect if you actually saw heaven. Have you ever been here before? Have you ever checked out this beautiful, beautiful island? If so, please put in the comments below. I'd love to know more about your adventures, and so when I come back, I can go check out even more incredible spots. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Stay curious, and I look forward to seeing you on my next journey.